In this episode we sail from the Sunblast, navigating through the world's second busiest shipping line after sunset. Arriving Shelter Bay Marina in the dark and my friends are jumping off for this time. Amanda is flying back to Italy and I'm testing out alternative transport back to Shelter Bay. Alicia and Brian also got to test out alternative transport back to Bocas del Toro, hitchhiking with a motor yacht that I even was allowed to give you a little tour from. After some lazy days in the sunblast, we needed to point our nose towards Shelter Bay Marina. Again, we are on a tight schedule, and this is also the end of this year's chill and sailing for me, well aware of all the tasks and jobs waiting for me. With the help from Rick Moore, we managed to get B3 in a temporary working condition, but it was only a temporary quick fix. Even though we have managed pretty okay with things as is during my friend's holiday on board B3, I know there is massive work and expenses that's going to not only blow my budgets to pieces, but take all my time the next weeks. Insurance cover nothing from what I believe is caused by lightning on the sail from San Andreas to Bocas. So I just uh, talked to uh, my friends on a boat behind me and uh, luckily they are okay. Uh, we had a lightning strike in the water uh, between us and that was pretty close. <laughs> so uh, Insurance yeah. company excuse this time is it's rain season and lightning damages is not covered during this season. Also, how to prove that all the problems that came after this sail is because of lightning hitting the ocean behind me is a challenge. So the end of this holiday sailing with friends that for me have been almost like escaping the reality for some weeks is now soon gonna catch up with me in many ways. It's for sure gonna be sad to see friends leaving but also in a weird way looking forward to start on my work with Be Free. But for now, I'm just gonna enjoy the last days and hours with my friends and making sure we reach Shelter Bay Marina in time for Amanda to catch her flight to Italy. Here in Panama we are now entering the dry season, meaning the weather is going to be much better. Luckily it's not far from San Blas to Shelter Bay as we have to burn diesel to get there. The trade winds have not reached here yet and in the transition between rainy and dry season it's often absolutely no wind here. And being on a schedule means I have to run the engine not having time to just drift around out here. After altering the course towards south also the wind changed and I needed to adjust the sails a bit. I had a bit baggy sails to catch the light winds, but now with engine running and on a close reach it's either to tighten up, avoiding flopping sails or to furl it in. Being a bit rolly I tried to keep the sail up as it stabilized the boat, making it more comfortable. in the house. What's going on? Hello, <laughs> we're cooking. You're cooking? <laughs> what are you cooking? Um, rice and wedges oh. and eggs. <laughs> In one of my earlier episodes I explained how to approach Colon with traffic control and separation zones. Arriving in the dark makes it even more complicated, especially with all the lights from anchored ships waiting to transit. 
I would say an AIS transponder and receiver should be mandatory for both the ships to see better, but also for your own ease of navigation here. A radar is one of my favorite tools, but at the moment I don't have a functional radar, so I'm feeling a bit blind in the dark. I believe also this is due to the lightning strike I had in the ocean, as I mentioned earlier. This time I studied the AIS and tried to find a ship I could tag along with through the narrow entrance by approaching one that had a slow enough speed that we could go behind. This was a good strategy as it was pretty busy and due to my AIS transponder, the traffic control also saw my speed and position. So when hailing the traffic control they said I could just continue my course and stay behind the ship I already had plotted. It can be a challenge to separate channel markers from navigation lights and all the light noise from anchored ships as well. So I'm really happy to know this entrance well enough to feel confident going through here and into the marina in the dark. I know this marina is not a big fan of late arrivals, which is understandable. It's a narrow entrance with coral reefs and also can be a bit tricky to dock when it's dark. But again, I've been here so many times and know exactly where the be free place is. But with crew on board, it's even easier as they can help with lines but also extra eyes in all directions, making sure we are not getting too close to anything. Brian, hi. Nice to meet you. So, 
Thank you. You don't have time for beer? Uh, Come on, just lunge. It's not easy, guy. You don't need to twist his arm. You can go for it. <laughs> Here, my friend. Gracias, Alicia. Hey. Hey. Salud. I'm sorry to bring you up this evening. <laughs> no, I was just loading stuff in the car, uh, leaving tomorrow okay. morning early. Oh, you were? Si, sí, but oh. I'll be back Monday. After a good night's sleep in the marina, it sadly was time for Amanda to fly back to her job in Italy. I'm following her to the airport in Panama City, which is an expedition in itself. Transport from Shelter Bay to bus station, from the bus station with express bus to Panama City, and a taxi from there to the airport. Nice flight. Thank you. <laughs> Panama City to Amsterdam. <laughs> I noticed it's a metro system in Panama, so I wanted to find out how it works and if this could be an alternative to Okay, and um, before you can go on the metro you have to buy a card, and that's you can do on this machine. And you get a card, then you can recharge with uh, money. And this friendly guy here helped me out with this thing, and also the direction for um, the old brick mall, right? Yeah. Muchas gracias, señor. Have a good nice day. <laughs> gracias. So this is my conclusion from either taxi all the way or taxi then bus and taxi again to get to the airport versus the third alternative taxi, metro, bus and taxi again. It's the first alternative taxi all the way is the best option. Not only much faster, but not of a big difference in total cost. If you are two or more to share the taxi is definitely a winner. But it was interesting to test and to find out all the alternatives. An Uber would be the fourth and definitely the best alternative. But an Uber is hard to get here in Panama. Oh, it's lunch hour. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome. Enjoy. I got nice to have you guys on board. <laughs> Thank you so much. Last day maybe. <laughs> yeah, because you might be jumping on board a Marriott on a shortcut down back to Bocas. Maybe. You're, maybe. you're so posh. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, so that's when B3 is not good enough? <laughs> <laughs> no, we never said something like that. <laughs> Uh, is the place to be. Yeah. <laughs> it's not only sailing yachts visiting Shelter Bay Marina, but also quite a lot of more yachts and even mega yachts. So I'm really happy that Alicia and Brian managed to not only get the ride back to Bocas, but also trying out how it is on a more yacht. But <laughs> might be going with this one here. What is that? <laughs> Are you sad? What happened? <laughs> <laughs> we jump on the yard. We jump on the yard. <laughs> Officially, yacht jumpers now. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> so, it's so all your things. Yes. Don't yeah. film that <laughs> <laughs> But you have the rest of your things in Bocas, right? Yeah. yeah. At the hostel. Okay, we're moving out. Yeah. We're moving out. Thank you so much. Thank you so Thank much. You. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for flying with Be Free. <laughs> Hope you had a nice <laughs> tour. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it was awesome. Thank yeah, you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm so happy for this opportunity that Alicia and Brian could experience a Nordhaven 55 on the overnight sail westward to Bocas del Toro. These motor yachts are famous for being very capable ocean going vessels and have a transatlantic capacity. It's not very fast because it's designed for economical cruising just below displacement speed that happens to be the same as the displacement speed on B3 
as they have more or less the same hull length in the waterline. Tony, Dave and their dog welcoming us on board their beautiful yacht and I was even allowed to share their home with you guys. Wow! There we go. So here's our little salon and our uh, our galley. Wow. Nice. Just like your boat. Uh, not exactly. <laughs> and then we got the State master mountain. stateroom. Wow. We got the stand-up shower, which uh -huh. is also just like your sailboat. I have stand-up shower, yeah. You do? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I also end suite cabin with the separate shower and oh, yeah. uh, separate yeah. toilet room. We've got forward, forward stateroom over there. Oh, you can go through here. That's nice. Yeah, you can go above through the stairs. Yeah. Wow. Another full bath. That can be interesting in high seas. What's that? Like in shower in the front if it goes like this. Yeah, I <laughs> don't know that I'd recommend it. But it's like, this is a 55? Yeah, it's about 59 feet oh, actually. Yeah. So It's so crazy how much more space it is compared to mine. Then we go to the pilot house. Okay, staircase up to the pilot house. Stuff. All sorts of toys to play with. This uh, almost makes me feel like home. <laughs> and then we have another bedroom back here. Oh, and for the uh, crew captain. Captain and a, and a day head right here. Oh, perfect. We got another day head right here. So. It's like here. Wow, nice. And, uh, here, we'll go. You don't have to walk far. If you don't you... have to walk far. So you can go. Go forward to the Portuguese bridge, which is great at night, or if the seas are rough and you want to get outside. Yeah. So you can come out here, enjoy the sunshine, fly bridge. Uh, a little second dinghy, which is really helpful on the Pacific side where you have waves. Uh, take the big dinghy on and it gets up on shore and if the tide goes out a little bit you're stuck so we have a small one that's a little six horse motor lots of stairs both inside and outside on this yacht and all the floors including this flybridge gives you a feeling of being on a much bigger yacht than it is if it's a 55 or technically a 59 it's like be free if she's a 55 or technically a 59 with platform down Still, it makes my boat look like a dinghy side by side with this one. <laughs> so how long you had this boat? About three years. Wow, so you know it's good. quite good now. Yeah. Another set of stairs down. <laughs> That's the important stuff. That's the most important stuff. Yeah. That is the yeah. most important room. So yet another set of stairs. Yeah. Lots of stairs on this boat. It's it's pretty uh, like uh, high uh, yeah. for the size. You got a washer dryer down here and another another freezer for food. Stand up engine room. For me, it's a stand up. Uh, we have all the filters and collectors. We have about 2,300 gallons of fuel. So, so what's your range? Uh, about 3,000 miles. And about 8 knots. Uh, so. Uh, okay. There's your Nordhaven 55, yeah. which is basically the same as the 60. Yeah. The 60s cost more for five feet. <laughs> Here, I'll show you. Tony and Dave are such sweet people, and I'm sure Alicia and Brian will feel very welcome and enjoy their ride back to Bocas del Toro. I'm really thankful for also getting the chance to see this boat, as I've known this model for many years and finally got the chance to see it inside and out. To me, it really doesn't matter if it's a cat, mono, motor or sail yacht. 
I'm always curious and interested in seeing different solutions and also to learn why we all think different and have different needs and desires. And now I'm feeling a bit strange as it's a bit sad to say see you later and to be alone on Be Free again. I really do enjoy sailing solo, but after this last weeks the transition back to what's normal for me is a bit sad. We had such a good time together and I'm going to miss Amanda, Alicia and Brian. In the next episode I start lots of projects as I'm no longer on a schedule or having guests on board. Everything from fiberglass work to fix a leak to get my generator up and running again. Even installing new batteries that's gonna be a game changer in combination with a different setup and more effective use of my solar energy. I have not had much time to be on social medias or even upload new episodes prioritizing hard all my work here in the marina. But soon it's time to move on into the next chapter of my adventures with Be Free. Thank you all so much for watching and for subscribing to my channel. A special thank you to all my patrons that's really big help for me now dealing with all the extra costs and troubles lately. Be happy and be free. <laughs>